So welcome to Bunny's welcome to Bunny's Designs. I've uh, decided to have um, to start Joanna Basswood's Inky and the Butterfly, uh, and I've taken a couple of weeks playing with different mediums, uh, water-based mediums, um, and I had a, a bit of a practice in the Hannah Carlson Daydreams. I wanted to use the Derwent graphic liner pens and I love these and you're supposed to use them quite freely and quite messy and blobby but I wanted to have some kind of control so I was playing with the gorgeous colours or practicing um, let's see if I can just this back. and I had a blob and they are supposed to blob these pens but I didn't really want them to and so I managed to get some of the colour on the pen here and I worked from touching the end of the nib of the pen and I created a monochrome um, and then I was doing something else and I ended up with another another blob um, the purple blob I've had two purple blobs the purple one blobbed as well but I really like the colours and I like the fact that you can get an inky effect from these and if you're really careful you don't go through the page so that led me to play with um, 20 different pages so on this side I had just one colour um, and I've been scratching a bit of the colour onto a ceramic dish or a ceramic plate I don't use very much ink and so most of it that comes off the pen goes into the colour book so I, this is another one that it blobbed and so I used all the paint and probably got about 20, 20 different shades of purple from one pen. Again, I had another blob so I got another colour page so it looks quite nice. Um, I've been having a practice of mixing colours together, that was my first attempt, a yellow and a pink and I really like the colours. Um, that mushroom's a different one. It's not not graphic liner pens. I had a blob of the red. This is the brick red, <coughs> which is that one's called blood. That one. It looks slightly brown, but it isn't. It's a it's called brick, um, and it's uh, brick lane. It's called, and it comes out a ready brown. So I really enjoyed that, and it was a colour that I wouldn't have normally chosen. But I've been having a practice using them very sparingly as a as a kind of an inky watercolour and got some quite nice effects because I, I find there's something quite nice. Because it's called the inky butterfly, I want to use ink. But I can wa want to use them in a controlled way. So this is the Derwent Graphic liner pens. And again, it's taken me a couple of weeks to get this technique, but I kind of like using them as a watercolour, but still getting a bit of an inky effect. So that was the last attempt. So it's taken about 20 pages to get some two-tone colour color play. <clears throat> and because I want to make a good job, I haven't rushed in, so I've done... Uh, 12 to 13 pages on there and I've worked in a Joanna Basford magical jungle um, and again practiced on that particular paper. So this has led me to another practice and this is all to do with if I did the first page and made a mess of it I'd be really cross the whole way through the book. So I'm, I'm making sure that I'm happy with the brushes, I'm happy with the, the, the colour, I'm happy with the technique and the pages are happy with the amount of water and the amount of pigment they're getting. So I'm not going to go through because it's a double-sided book. I don't want to do that. Now I'm quite lucky that these spaces are quite small so we can get away with a damp brush and a little bit of, of acrylic ink. Um, I would probably do this, you could do this with watercolour, you can do this with the Neos, anything that you can scratch a little bit of colour on, that's the best way. <coughs> Now these acrylic graphic liner pens, I've got an acrylic ink in. So that means if you're using them with wet things, um, they'll stay wet and then they'll dry and they're fixed. 
So if you put them on a ceramic, a little bed on a ceramic dish, and then you're painting, it's going to dry really quickly. And then you're just left with acrylic you have to wash away. But I found a neat trick that if you use a damp baby wipe, face wipe, hand wipe, not kitchen towel because it disintegrates. And I've just put kind of a little bit of a, a wet, just wiped it wet, so this is damp. And now if I put a little bit of colour, and you're supposed to shape these. Now you wouldn't do them normally over your work because these blob and you will get a mess, but we'll just have a go. And what I do then is I, I'm going to zoom in in a second, but you can see the colour runs off, there's a bit too much water there. So now that's going to stay a little bit wetter, a little bit longer. And they are designed to go on lots of water on watercolour paper, but I'm using them in the colour book. So I've got that little bit of colour now. So I'm going to take my, uh, and I'm working with my Winsor & Newton, a 5, a 3 and a 2. They're riggers and they're tapered and I kind of like the, the shape of them. So I've got the number, the number 1. So I've got 1, 3 and 5. I like odd numbers. So I twist this dunk the water, dunk the brush, drag it backwards and twist it as I go, just once. And that's going to leave me a barely damp brush and it's also going to leave me to a lovely point. And then I can touch this colour here, just a little bit on the end, and it's going to give me a watercolour effect, but it's an ink. Now this might be a little bit difficult because a uh, different because this is on the the back page or the back of the front page, and so of course it's going to react a bit different because it's got a shiny surface. But I wanted to put a little bit of this colour in here, like so. And then what you can do is just kind of dampen this. If you can see, it's damp, and because it's now got a little bit of water to all of it it's going to stay a little bit wetter for longer. So I can go somewhere else, maybe this flower, and go on the outside, but it's a lot paler because it's diluted a little bit more. So although it's the same colour, we're getting two shades out of one. And you can work quite loosely. So the damp brush is pushing it about, and the little bit of dampness is making sure that it remains kind of, I might actually do something else, what have we got, we've got this, that wants to be maybe white, because um, I've still got a little bit of paint on here so I want to use all of it up, and let's have a look, maybe the tips, the middle of this one, and it's getting paler and paler, but it's going to give some beautiful soft pinks that we've got from quite a strong red. So we can look about the page and see what else we want. So perhaps, perhaps, um, have a look at this, this little pink here. Just a soft touch on the end. And it's nearly all gone now, so that's fine. What I'm wanting to do is to use all of it up so I'm not kind of losing it. This will be a little pink flower on this cup. Um, they can be tipped with pink and it's still a very very soft pastel pink and it's nearly all gone now so I'm going to wash the brush out there's hardly anything gone in there at all so I can safely say I've nearly used all that now if I was doing a bigger page I'd just put another blob on there so this is wet And I'm going to put a bit of this, um, so that one was called Blood. They've all got unusual names, these graphic pens. Uh, <clears throat> this is called Clockwork, so it's obviously going to be an orangey colour. Um, so just make sure, you have to shake them the first time you use them. And then I just gently scribble a little circle. And it's, it's damp, it's on a damp surface. So I take my little brush and I can just use a little bit here if I want. Remember this was the brightest colour, so we can stroke a bit of colour into here. 
Now it will react differently with different pens of different paper, but I like the fact we can get some fairly bright colours. And the crossover obviously very carefully go over there. So a damp brush and what I want to do now is to pick up all that colour and I'm going to do the tips of this leaf and it's a very soft yellow. I could have done with a little bit more but that'll be fine. I just haven't wasted it and there's nothing on the dish. So as a tight Yorkshire lass I love that. <coughs> then that back I have quite a vibrant colour and then I have some soft pinks about the page and by the time I finish this page I will really know how to control every scrap of paint out of here so when I go to my real pages I can work a little bit drier and I can also be in full control so I haven't damaged the page and I've practiced my brush skill I've also practiced my colour matching so find out that do I like that red with that yellow what happens to it um, so by the time I get into the book I've got a really good knowledge of the brush, the dampness, the, the ink colours, the combination colours and the paper. So that should make everything else just being creative after that. But you do need to do a bit of a practice if you're using a new product and a new colour book. And as I said, these are definitely not used for this. So I'm going to put a little bit of... Um, I did earlier, when I was practicing, I did practice, uh, I didn't put the colours down, but as I was playing in this particular page here, I was writing the colours down. So I knew that um, a pink would go with a green and the yellow would go with a purple, orange with a blue. And because there's one or two different ones, I wrote them down. So my favourite combinations are written down just as numbers. So I could actually go for this. So we'll go for a number three, which is um, Tom. So it's kind of an orangey red. And you just shake it a little bit to start with. Now, sometimes you get a blob when you do that, which is why I do it over the dish. And if I have a blob, I have a colour book spare that if I have a blob I stop what I'm doing and I work the blob. So this particular page I was working with the colours, beautiful colours and I had a blob. So I coloured this, the rest of the background in there and I coloured this page just from one blob because the colours were very vibrant and I didn't want to waste it. Um, I had a blob of purple so I ended up doing the castles and again I'm not wasting the ink so the whole blob instead of wasting it wiping it up with a tissue I used the ink and it I was practicing brush um, technique but I was also getting a very dark full color to the palest color so I got 20 shades out of one paintbrush um, I did the same with the with the crown that's just a blob and I actually got both those out of that the other one was the blue, blue one, I think. I had a blob of red. So this is called brick red um, and it's a brownie red. So I did the hair and I used every scrap up. I think there's just one other, the purple butterfly. That was the blob as well. But eventually I got used to using them and I've used them using a little bit of colour and then mixing them. So scratching the little circles and mixing them but only doing two colours at once because they're an acrylic and they dry. But I did get some different techniques and then by the time I got to this one I decided this is definitely what I want to use in the inky butterfly. I love these watercolory inky colours. So I decided this is what I wanted to use. But it took almost 20 pages of practicing because, again, these are not designed to go in colour books. 
but you can use any water-based medium. You just have to have a practice. So it's always a good idea to have a book that you don't particularly like. Now, of course, I love my daydreams, um, but that paper uh, is is quite nice. And, and again, some of the, the images I wouldn't know how to colour, but because I've got the blob, I then just go for it. But what I have done is made made um, a combination of colours that I've used that I like together. So I just wrote the numbers down. So as I was doing it, it was really quick. Um, so we know number 10. Number 10 is Billy. And it's like a turquoise green. So a bit of a shake. Uh, so I have a wet baby wipe and I'm wiping just to coat the surface with dampness. If you have it too much, it'll run out, but I'm not really bothered. So what I want to do now is do a little circle and you can see that's the color. And because it's slightly wet, it's gonna stay a little bit better. And I know I wanted a bit of orange here. So the run a little bit, you can see they're running a little bit because it's damp. So they're gonna last me a bit longer. And again, it took me two weeks to get this. So dunk the brush in water on a baby wipe, a face wipe, or a damp hand wipe, drag it backwards. Now this is a sable brush, so it, it doesn't act quite as well behaved. But you twist it as you draw it back, and that's gonna give you a damp brush with the perfect point. So now I can go in there and I can touch a bit of this color, just a little bit, and I can touch here. Now this brush is very, it is only just barely damp, is this brush. So a bigger space probably would mean a bigger brush. I've got three out at the moment. So I've put that strong green there. So we'll try something else. So we've got this, um, this green here, so I'm going to use a damp a damp brush and I've kind of watered it down a bit and I'm going to use it um, on the inside of this this kind of uh, leafy twig so I've got my diluted green there um, and possibly I can use this somewhere else because I've got this green on here so I don't really want to lose it Again, tight Yorkshire Lass. I don't want to wash it away. It's still a beautiful, soft, mint colour now because it's diluted. I can manipulate that. I've got another stem here. And I still seem to have a bit of green. So what I'm going to do is just wet the brush a bit. It's not holding too much water. And work that a little bit wetter because this is a front page so it can take that and put that lovely soft mint green down almost like a back a backing and then I'm not going to touch this area for a while because this is a bit of a damp quite a damp wet brush find somewhere else that we could put mint and then I'm going to touch the the yellow note, it's nearly dried as the yellow one, so I've got to constitute it back. But that dampness on there has just kept it nice. So now I'm going to go back to here. And because we weren't too damp, it's dried. So we've got this nice yellow. And where it kind of goes over that green, sorry, the blue, we have a nice, unusual homemade green. So damp brush. Make the colour a little bit wetter. Um, I used it down here. So then we've got the pale minty colour, but underneath we've got this pale yellow colour here. So we're going to get some really nice colours. Because these are inks, that's the only reason they're inky. And because they're inky, we can get that gorgeous colour. Now there's still a little bit of colour, but if we push these together now, very, very faint now. We've got that little bit of blue and that little bit of orange. So we've kind of got a grungy green. So I'm just going to go over here to this leaf and I'm going to just do 
the edge and it's barely noticeable it looks like just a dirty colour but what it's going to do is give a lovely soft highlight when we put another colour on it a bit later so again I want to go look around to see what else I've got this could be this colour at the top and it's almost gone so I wash the brush out so of course it's a very strong ink and there's just the tiniest little bit of of colour on there so I've wiped it and now that's next what's wiped and damp for the next colours and you have to be a little bit quick because it's an acrylic and it will dry um, just put the I'll zoom in and put the autofocus on if you've got any questions pop them in caps and if I do this see if I can steady my hand you can see we've got some really subtle beautiful colours so that pink hasn't got anything on it but that one has got the mint and the pink so it's kind of an inky effect and then we have that's the very, very watered down version of what we had left. So as you can see, and I think I did that leaf as well. It's just the tiniest bit of colour on there. But that's going to be fine because we're going to work from very dark and strong to very pale. So I shall move the camera down and then I shall do a, a particular flower and then you can see a little bit better. Does anybody have any questions? You can do the same technique using... Um, scratching a little bit of, of Neo Colour onto there, Neo Colour 2. You can do um, a scratch a little bit of um, Derwent watercolour pencil, any watercolour pencil or crayon on a paper palette, and you have the full control with the damp long brush. So you can still do this with other things, but um, I love the fact that it's, it's an ink. So I'm just going to shut the camera for a second and drop the camera down. It's hopefully not causing too much stress. Wait for the camera to... So you can see it's a lovely, lovely softer colour. But it's not that bright, vivid orange that we see here. So I shall have to remember to put the focus off because it will drive us insane. Let's see if we can read we can read that. Just see if I can get that a little bit smarter than that. So I'm quite happy with this size brush. This is the number one, uh, Winsor & Newton Rigger Sable, and it's the number one. So I've done that to colour. I'm going to put a, a piece of paper here so that my little dish and you can use any ceramic plate as long as it's white it's better to be white and it does need it's dried out now it's completely dry it just wants ve 